wanted to do just is to position this because I think um, um, skills and upskilling, we've heard quite a lot about it already um, at the conference, but it's absolutely critical. So all the things that we talk about in terms of as, as an engineer or as a transport planner about providing solutions, if we don't have the right skills, then actually we're not going to be able to deliver the solutions in an appropriate way. So because we live in a very uncertain and disrupted world, I mean, this is, this is what we're operating in and this is what we're going to continue to operate in over the foreseeable future. It means that skills are even more important. It's not something that we can tack on at, at the end. It's not something that we can think about as an adjunct. It's something we've got to embed through everything that we do. And certainly we hear the phrase skills crisis and we think about both capacity, i.e. sheer numbers or the lack of uh, numbers coming into our sector, and capability. So have we got the right skills in the right place to equip us to deliver what we need to do over the foreseeable future? And things are moving fast. We don't grasp this and really engage with it, then the disruptors will come in and, and take the, the pitch. So it's really important that we, we think about this um, in some detail. And how do we keep up with change? Um, one of the things that I think is fundamental, this is a business imperative, not just a, a good to do thing, because if we don't do professional development and upskilling, then we become less resilient. So if we do it, we become more resilient. And resilience in your workforce and for your business is absolutely critical. We become more relevant in a very uncertain world. We become more flexible, and I think flexibility is going to be absolutely critical as we move forward. And there's some um, research and analysis that sort of starts to suggest that uh, specialization actually alone is not going to, it's going to silo us. So being able to be flexible and move across and with the right skills, I think is going to be very, very important. Um, we're going to be more employable. People will seek us out and not just the normal sectors. We're going to be more professional. And also it drives in more productivity. And as a sector, uh, uh, we will need to do further work around productivity because our levels of productivity are quite low if you measure against service and manufacturing, for example. So, are you, are you professional? Well, I would hope everyone will probably say yes, um, but you might think you are, but there's a real issue around demonstration. How do you prove it? How do you prove it to clients, to an employer, a prospective employer, or if you're an expert witness? Um, how do you actually reassure the public? because the public takes a huge interest in the things that you all do and are very keen and quick to jump and criticise. So actually, how do we demonstrate about professionalism? And, and certainly there's an issue around status of the profession as well. So I want to talk very, very briefly a little bit about CIHT. So how can we help with all of this? Now, the approach that CIHT takes is very much, it is about partnership and it's a partnership with uh, the supply chain, with the clients, uh, with our corporate partners. Um, but we have a number of professional membership classes and if you, if you become a member of CIHT, you therefore become part of a wider network of people who have similar interests skill sets, competencies uh, and knowledge. So this is about a commitment to your professional standards. It's about a benchmark because you're held to account through a code of professional conduct. And it's also around your continued professional development. It's not something that you can dip in and out of. You need to really plan and work that through. And of course, there's recognition through any professional qualification. And hopefully it also drives in really good practice through your employer, but also across the sector more generally. So if you wanted to become professionally qualified, um, how, how do you go about it? 
Well, there's national and uh, international recognition uh, being a professional, so it gives you a passport to move around in different countries, gives you greater influence in your organisation, and there's sort of recognition, and I think that's really important, is recognition about your level of expertise and your level of knowledge. And I think fundamentally the research shows it also supports your career development as well. So what do we offer? Now, these are the standard professional qualifications, so a Chartered Engineer, Incorporated and Engineering Technician, as well as the Transport Planning Professional and our Road Safety Auditing Certificate of Competency. Now, having said all this, the one thing that CHT and I am particularly passionate about is that actually we need to provide routes through from wherever you want to start your professional qualification uh, route to wherever you want to finish up. So we're very much supporting the whole route through the apprenticeships. And really, we've, we've already got one at the Leeds uh, School of Building on transport planning, and we want to encourage more. So that actually, it isn't about just going on a more traditional sort of qualification route, but you can come in at any level, stop at whatever level is appropriate to you as well. So really driving in a, a continuum of, of learning and a continuum of professional qualifications. So why choose CIHT? Well, if you want to do your professional qualification, why, why would you join CIHT? Well, because you're going to be assessed by and talk, talking to and mentored by your peers, people who work and in the industry and understand what you do and how you do it and what, what is required to get a professional qualification. And I think that sort of context is really important. We also provide not only nationally but regionally a lot of support through, through our networks as well. So that actually wherever you happen to be located and working, there's always some support through our members for you on your journey. And hopefully as you go through that, you start to feel you want to actually get involved and mentor and support those coming through as well. Um, we also provide comprehensive guidance so you know what you need to do and when you need to do it, as well as experienced staff who will help guide you on the way. Because Search T takes professional development and skills so seriously, um, we're going to be introducing um, in 2018 a new professional development scheme now this this scheme um, you know a number of you will be familiar with other schemes that are out there but this scheme is absolutely designed for people working in highways and transportation so it's not a scheme that if you're doing civil engineering in the widest possible stance but this is absolutely directed to those of you who this is the career you're in, this is where you want to uh, pursue your qualifications and this will be the scheme for you. It's going to be absolutely appropriate whether you're in the private or the public sector, whether you're uh, being supported through a company or you are doing it individually. So this is going to be all encompassing. It's going to be an online resource, so we're not talking about having to go to various meetings um, but this will be done online and it's going to be structured as you you move through we're also introducing um, something called our CPD accreditation um, this is really about recognizing and um, acknowledging that there's some really good CPD courses around and we want to recognise those and actually accredit those so that our members know that there is a, a cart mark of quality. Because I don't know about um, the rest of you, I go to some events and I come away and I think actually the quality of what I've been listening to isn't as good as perhaps I would have expected. So this scheme is very much around trying to put the sort of benchmarking. If you get if you get a program or a course accredited through our CPD accreditation scheme, then it is a a 
as much as you can guarantee of quality appropriateness and relevance for the sector and the market that you're aiming it to I want to just now turn to um, our skills award we've been running a skills award for uh, a number of years now and this is a way of drawing out from the sector the really good practice that you do because as a sector we all seem to be extremely modest and very um, un unable or certainly not willing to shout about the really good stuff that we do if you're any any architects here anybody who knows architects well they will shout about what they do and they shout very loudly and one of the things that we want to do is actually celebrate the good practice and the excellent work that you do and certainly through the skills award this is our opportunity to be able to do that um, and as you can see from the slide we it, it is about an award that um, recognizes uh, where there's issue, initiatives that have added value to not only the employees but the organizations and the industry so it has to do more than just support a particular person doing something it has to have that wider added value and benefit um, we've been looking for innovation as well um, you know and seeing where that's been driven through um, and how it really deals with some of the skills issues and deficits that we face at the moment but also engages with and sometimes with communities that perhaps don't think about highways and transport as a career choice so it's about really looking at and and that sort of engagement as well and we have um, two, two um, of our um, um, skills award uh, entries here today who are going to talk about in a few minutes what, what they were doing and how it worked and uh, we have um, the 2017 winner which is a Lehman to Barton Improvement uh, scheme a Carter, um, Carillion Morgan Sindel joint adventure and you can see what the judges uh, said about that it's a it's a summary but again it's really about um, offering to the local community education employment and training opportunities beyond the normal um, reach and then we also have uh, from um, Keir Highways and Surrey County Council their, their scheme on S skills for highways and again you can see from the judges comments how highly regarded that scheme was and I think both of these are just really good demonstrators of some of the fantastic practice that we see within highways and transportation in the supply chain and with our clients so with no further ado really I wanted to move us forward but I just wanted to put this um, on if you do want to find out anything more about what I've been talking about as, a, as an overview or how you might be able to engage or some of your colleagues might want to engage with CIHT then please do get in contact with us through two email addresses either at education or technical at ciht.org.uk